that I did with the Jews with 613 laws and you got to, can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this, you can't do that. And he says, I'm not going to keep this system because if they have to keep 613 laws to be righteous, none of them will be righteous. And then after they sin, if they have to keep coming back to me to sacrifice animals, they're like, this is just a, a, a strange process of, okay, I sinned, now I gotta take a goat. I sinned, now I gotta take a lamb. I've sinned, you know, it's his process, and God says he, he, he never delighted in sacrifices, okay? But he delights in obedience. So God gave us a system with Jesus Christ on the cross, okay? He's on the cross and he's saying, everything you did, I'm going to take it upon me. So your sins, and he knew you before you were born that you would need salvation. Because Psalms 22 says, Jesus said, I am doing this for all the souls that will be born many years from now. So for everybody, he's on this cross dying so that we could all have the opportunity to be saved. And if we don't understand how simple. Now, how do you, how do you get saved? How do you get saved? Is it like the scripture says, don't say, well, who's going to go up into heaven and bring God down? Or who's going to go into the deep of the, of the world and, and bring God up? He said, it's not that hard. Salvation is in your mouth. On your lip, if you would confess the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him into your heart, it says repent of your sins, right? Because all salvation comes with repentance first. Repent, you ask him into your life, and then once you ask him into life, this miraculous thing happens to you. The Holy Spirit comes out of nowhere and resides inside of your body. And now you've got the spirit of God inside of you and you don't feel even comfortable with sin anymore. Why? Because the Holy Spirit moved in. So that spirit begins to change you and to make you act different. Now you don't feel comfortable with using profanity. Now you don't feel comfortable with drinking. Now you don't feel comfortable because the spirit of God is trying to transform you into the image of Christ and, that, and to make you so that you can be like Christ. But being born again is a simple process. God made it this way because he wants as many people saved as possible. But what's the problem then? Deception. OK, deception is the problem. I've got to make Jesus Christ, God, relationship and Christianity look weird and strange. And I've got to make drinking beers and hanging out with your friends and smoking weed and listening to to, to bad music and all that. I've got to make that look cool, all right? So who do you think is the God of this world, God? Satan is, the Bible says Satan is the God of this world. If I was the God of this world, I'm not going to make you, I'm not trying to get you to heaven. If, if I'm, God is my enemy, I'm not going to try to get you to heaven. So everything I promote to you is going to promote to you what? The opportunity to go to hell. But I'm going to make it look real cool, okay? So we have to understand that deception is in the world, but God is in control and you're on a time cycle. We have to get smart. We're on a time cycle. OK, even if you your time cycle before would be you're not going to live forever and you're going to have to face God. But now we're at a time cycle like you're in the last days. So you have to be prepared because you're in the last days. OK, let's see what else. All right. This is what God did. OK, God marked in the scripture in the 1948th year in the scriptures. So if you count from Adam to the 1948th year, Abraham's father begins having his three children. But God marked it in the 1948th year for a reason. Why did he do that? He knew that Israel would be reborn when? In 1948. OK, so God is giving us markers and giving us things so that we understand that he's in control For, because there's no reason that God is going to make if you count from Adam to the to the, the beginning of the birth of Abra Abraham's father and having his children to be exactly 1948 years God is telling you something about 1948 right so God is letting us know I'm in control and I put certain things so that you know you don't have to doubt now 
there's certain things that happen that you should go, God is real. Okay? So, in the 19th book of the Bible, right, which is Psalms, in the 48th chapter of the book, so 1948, is the whole story of the rebirth of the nation of Israel. Now, in the 13th verse, it says, when you see this rebirth of the nation of Israel happen, he says, go around, look at his ramparts, look at the whole city. And then it says, and go and tell it to the Lador HaAkaron. He says, tell this to the last generation. So God not only marks 1948 twice already in scripture, but now he's telling you when it comes, you're going to be in the last generation. Because God don't want, he doesn't want to make this hard. He wants to make it simple so that you know. Why don't people know? Deception. There are churches that the pastors would lose their jobs if they talked about the rapture. They would lose their jobs if they said some of the things that, that, that I say to you or some of the other watchers that actually are preaching the gospel are saying. They would lose their jobs. Why? Because in seminary schools and in the churches that they're, that they, that they're ministering in, those churches are owned by Freemasons and they're not allowed to. And so the deception continues. Why? Because Satan is after souls. God is after souls. You're in a spiritual battle for your life. OK. And you have to understand that this is not a game because people say, well, you know, I'm too strong. I'm so strong in the Lord Jesus Christ that I would never backslide or sin. <laughs> right. <laughs> Please. I mean, we've had people that's preached here saying beautiful songs here that went back in the world and are doing their thing. OK, so it's not that you can say I'm so strong because the guy that says I'm so strong, I can never fall is in danger. Right. Yeah. So let me let me look at some other things that the Lord wanted me to bring. Oh, God predicted the rise of power way before they came into power. And it happened. Even if you go in your history books, it'll tell you who the four world powers are. Babylon, Persia. To tell you these were the were for, four world powers, but it says it in the Bible. Two, three history books got to it, so God already knew. Then it says, it says, um, He tells Israel, "You're going to be in Babylon for seventy years." We we just read that in Daniel's, and then, but this is what he, he said going on, and Judah went to Babylon, okay, first. All the people in Judah, but he but the people who lived in Jerusalem didn't go to Babylon until 19 years later. So when God brought them back into the world, he brought back Israel first. And then in 1967, exactly 19 years later, he brought Jerusalem back. Why? He made them fall 19 years apart. He brought them back 19 years apart. This blew my mind when I was when I first uh, uh, read about it, because I was like, how it, you made Israel fall first, then Jerusalem, 19 years apart, and then 520 years apart, and he gave me 2,520 years. And you can count it from the time they went into captivity all, all the way to 19 and he's the one that's controlling the world. Why? He doesn't want you to be surprised when you get to the end. Okay. And the other thing um, with Gaza, even so, so we can look at the modern thing, Gaza, right? Do, do Jews live in Gaza? No. No Jews living in Gaza. They used to before 2005. But Zephaniah, in the book of Zephaniah, it said Gaza will be forsaken. And it said it will be abandoned. Yeah. Okay. So we knew that sometime in history that Gaza was going to to be abandoned or forsaken. And in 2005, who was that? Bush and Condoleezza Rice yeah. convinced the Jews to give the Palestinians Gaza and, and they ordered the military from, from Israel to go and remove all the peoples from their homes in Gaza and all the businesses that were Jewish in Gaza. The, the, the Israeli military is taking people out, but you have to understand, 
the Bible had already said in Zephaniah, I think chapter one or two, that um, Gaza would be forsaken in the end times. And so it was. So what, what the Lord wants you to know is this. He's prophesied times. And look, when he prophesies it, when, he, when something is prophesied, it is spoken of. People will say, hey, do you know about this prophecy? Because before Israel came back and be, became a nation again, there were many people talking about it. You think Israel will ever be a nation again? Well, the Bible says they will be. Well, I don't know. You know, they, they're still not in their land. It's 1932. They're still not in their land. Uh, well, now they're in Germany. They're getting killed. I, I don't think they're going to ha ever have their own land again, right? And then all of a sudden, boom, they're back in their land. And the whole world, Christians everywhere were celebrating like, the Bible's true. And this is what the Lord wants me to tell you concerning the rapture. They're going to have a great fear. Oh, my God, what they were talking about for and say, oh, it's past the day passed and there was no rapture. The Lord said it's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. And I said, why? This is in my word. I wrote it. This is not. I'm going to yell at people one time. This is not a man's prophecy. There is no man that said that came up with this that the last generation on earth would be Israel's rebirth. And after that last rebirth of the nation of Israel, that 70 years would be it. And now we're a month away from the end of that 70th year. Right. So we're looking at the whole world changing in a matter of less than a month. Now, someone said, Pastor Sandy, if you didn't talk about the rapture, you'd be a great pastor and you could pastor for a long time. Ooh. Yeah, I could lie. <laughs> wow. I could not tell you the truth. I could, I could, you know, I'm, I know I could teach the Bible. I could be kind of, what does it say, evasive. I could teach evasive rapture, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, what do they say? Well, it's... Um, we don't know the day or the hour, but we always want to be ready because we don't know someday in the distant future. This may happen or it may happen now. We never know. I could do that, right? Send your checks in to. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that, but with God, I would be completely punished. And if when everybody got raptured and then I didn't go because I'm preaching this thing, right? I would be in big trouble. OK. The world is not looking for the second coming of Jesus. When Jesus comes back to the earth, that is a completely different event. What we're looking for now is the taking away of the church out of the world and the beginning of tribulation. And when that happens, the world. The world's going to go, oh, my God, we're living in fear now. Now we know that the Bible is true. You want to ask yourself, why is it tribulation in chapter seven says all of these people make it through the tribulation because they didn't take the mark. They didn't take they didn't follow the beast. They didn't wouldn't take the mark in their left hand or their right. They got beheaded. Most of them. Right. And they did it willingly because of what? What happened in the world to make them completely sold out to Jesus now? They realize that what the scripture says is true. Now you have to realize from the beginning of this Bible, everything God has said is true. Okay? Nothing that he's spoken that he said is going to happen has gone un I mean without event okay that's why he says I'm watching over my word I'm watching over my word to make <laughs> okay oh, check this out okay do me a favor we can go back to Matthew 24 but I want you to go to um I think it's uh, Mark chapter 13. Go to Mark chapter 13. They, they should say, you know, what's left of the fulfillment of Jesus Christ's prophecy. Amen. 
And so as they're there, listen what he says. He says, he says, um, do you see these massive stones? And bins. And Jesus says, do you see all these great buildings? Jesus replied, not one stone will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. Now, if I had brought the book of Josephus with me today, the, the general of the army made a proclamation. He says, these stones are so big and so heavy. And if you want to read it, I'll, I'll give you the book of Josephus and you can read the whole event of what happened to that temple in what year? 70 AD. After what? Generation. What does the generation mean in Greek? Nativity. After the nativity, the birth of Jesus Christ, the end of his generation was 70 years and exactly what Jesus said happened in that temple. Why? Why is God? Why would God make this prophecy and tell you it's going to happen in that generation? To prepare us. How is he preparing us with this? If I did it here, I'm going to do it again. OK, if I said 70 years and it happened and it happened in 70 years, I'm not going to do it in 72. I'm not going to do it in 80. Because this is not the only testimony of Jesus saying something's going to happen in 70 years. How many did we do? We, we went over about six of them, right? He said, this is going to happen. It's a, Babylon, you go, it'll be over with in 70 years. They're out of Babylon in 70 years. Tyree, Tyree is going to be destroyed in 70 years. Exactly 70 years Tyree was destroyed. The children that moved in, into, into, is, into Egypt with, with Joseph, he said in that generation they all died off. Joseph died at 71, but all of his brothers died at 70. Another testimony. God is telling you, when I say 70, when I say a generation, I'm talking about the 70 year generation that I've told you about. OK, so it's happening. And now we're sitting here in the brink of history happening in this world. And I this is not like, OK, there's a, a prophecy guru on the Internet and his name is whatever, right? And he's figured out that we are going to be raptured before May 14th. You go, oh man, another guy, right? Everybody go, we've been through that before. But if Jesus came in this room and said, look, I spoke this prophecy, okay? I said, when Israel is rebirthed back into the world, you have 70 years left until this event happens. And if you're not prepared for it, the event will happen and you won't be ready. That is what the Lord is saying. This is not a man's prophecy. This is Jesus Christ himself. And he set it up since the beginning of time by giving you all the 1948s in the Bible. Then I'm going to give you all the 70 year prophecies that I fulfilled in the Bible. And now I'm going now that you're here, I'm going to make Sandy Armstrong a nut so he can actually tell it to you without any care that he may be embarrassed. Because it's not about me being embarrassed, because it's about what God has said. It's not going to pass. The world's going to change. The world has always had these moments. Jesus wasn't here at some time, but they prophesied that one day he's born. Jesus is on the scene. Herod tried to get rid of him. Every prophecy has a lot of chatter till it happens. And that's what we got now, chatter. A lot of chatter. You heard about the rapture? Some people say God's going to take his people, okay? God wants you to be taken. He wants you out of here because you have absolutely no idea what the world's going to be like after we leave. You have absolutely no idea. You don't know what a Nephilim looks like. You don't know what a world without the protection of the Holy Spirit in it looks like. You don't know what that looks like. But God wants you removed from here before it does happen. OK, let me go back. To Matthew 
24. How much time I got, Pastor Ben? You don't even know? Thanks, Pastor Ben. It's <laughs> what I need. I need. Um, that's good. Okay. All right. So we don't need to go back to, to, to Matthew chapter 23 because we know that in Matthew chapter 23, Jesus said the temple is going to be destroyed in this generation. And it was. And it was 70 years. And you're on the 70th year since the rebirth of the nation of Israel. So let's, let's deal with that, okay? And it says here, Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to the building. Do you see these things, he asked. I tell you the truth, no, not one stone will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives and the disciples came to him privately Tell us, they said, when will this happen and what will be the sign of the coming and the end of the age? And Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. That's his first advice to them. Watch out that no one deceives you. How? Because he knows that deception is in the world. How can I deceive you and take away your eternal life? I can give you a new religion. I can tell you this is this religion can get you to heaven just as good as Jesus. Mm. I can make a, a, a Jesus religion that almost looks like Christianity. OK, I could just call it Jehovah Witness. OK, I can make another religion, just call it Mormonism. Yeah. Right. I can make all these religions because what I'm trying to do for you, I'm trying to deceive you. I'm going to give you another way to heaven, but not not Jesus, God in the flesh who came to die on your cross. The Jesus I'm introducing you to is an angel and he wasn't God. OK. And, and, and matter of fact, I'll introduce you to another one. Not only is Jesus the, the guy that's his mother was a God, too. And we've got to praise her as well as praising Jesus because she's a God, too. And these are the statues you need when you pray. To, to God because you need these to help you minister to God. And now you're bowing down to statues and you're wearing statues around your neck and you, and, and you think you have religion, but we, you don't understand there's a deceiver in the world. Yeah. He's trying to keep you out of the kingdom of God. And I wish we all could just take, I, I wish we could all take two trips before we leave earth. One to hell and one to heaven. Wouldn't life be a lot easier then? Because you would come back just the sweetest person ever, <laughs> right? Nothing would bother you, right? But we don't, we, we don't have, but we do have the testimony. 3,000, over 3,000 testimonies on YouTube of people who have died and, and all of them said they either went into the light and they were with God or they went into the dark and they were in hell. None of them said, oh, I was just floating around. There was nothing going on. All of them have a testimony that they either went one way or the other, right? So if you wanted to go through all of the YouTube, just, put, just type in near-death experiences, and you'll go, oh, my God, okay? All of these people have experiences, and they're telling you. It's like somebody going to Japan and coming back and saying, went to Japan, the food is great over there. Oh, the people, man, I was the tallest guy over there. You know, and you'd be like, you, you would be able to have an experience, right? Because when I was doing prison ministry, one guy told me, I don't believe in hell because I, uh, I've never been there. And I said, that's okay. I said, I've never been to Japan either. I don't believe in Japan. <laughs> because you don't believe in it, don't make, make it disappear. So God is, we have more information now to make us understand how real Jesus Christ is than ever before. Am I talking a long time or it just seems like that? Uh, okay, I'm almost done. Okay. <laughs> All right. You back at, at, at Matthew chapter 24. So, so don't, don't be deceived. Okay. Don't be, don't allow yourself to be deceived. OK, watch out that no one deceived you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ and will deceive many. 
You will hear of wars. Okay, he's telling you how it's going to happen. You will hear of wars and rumors of war, but see that, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, kingdoms against kingdoms. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All this is the beginning of signs. When did all of that happen? World, the world War, the whole world at war, 1914. So 1914, I there was an earthquake in San Francisco in 1906. There was famine. There was flu. All of these things were going on around this time, right? And then World War I as well. And he says, do not be alarmed. This is just the beginning of troubles, okay? So then it says, then you will be handed over, he says, to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Okay. He's talking about that tribulation time now, okay? Because you have to keep your testimony during the tribulation. And he says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, then the end will come. That's going to happen during the tribulation too. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, uh, the angels will go throughout the whole world preaching the gospel to every nation, uh, people, and tongues. And then in verse 15, it says, so when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. Um, then those who are, are in Judea uh, should flee to the mountains. Now, he's saying that the abomination of desolation is going to take place, that the abomination of desolation is the Antichrist sitting in the temple of God, proclaiming to the whole world that he's God. Yeah. That means they have to build a temple during the tribulation. So are they building a temple right now? Or are they, are they planning? Yes, they are. Are they, plan they are fully planning building a temple right now. Part of this whole peace plan that Trump has going and his son has going with Israel, part of it is building the third temple. So don't listen to these people that are teaching you that, oh, no, that just means the temple is your body and Satan's going to try and come. We're the, we're the temple. No, he, the, a physical temple is going to be rebuilt in Israel and the Jews are going to think whoever allowed this temple to be rebuilt, that must be the Messiah. And they're going to believe that he's the Messiah. <clears throat> and right now, in this last time, in these last 70 years, they're planning on building a temple. <coughs> Excuse me. This is crazy. <clears throat> okay, here we go. <clears throat> Let no one on the roof. How long did it do? It says in verse 19, how dreadful it will be for those um, who are pregnant um, and nursing in those days. He's talking about because this event happened before. And that was and that where we got Hanukkah from. It says, pray that your flight not not take place in the winter on the Sabbath. The winter is because that's where we got Hanukkah from. For then there will be great distress unequal from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equal again. <clears throat> it says, if those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. Year will go from 365.2422 back to 360 day years as it was before. And it says, at that time, if anyone says to you, look, here's the Christ or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect. If that were possible, it says, so I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you there he is in the desert, do not go out 
or here he is in the inner room, do not believe it. Now, I used to think I don't have to read that because nobody would believe a person on earth who's claiming that he's Jesus is really Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't have to read that part. People know better than that. Mm -hmm. But you would be surprised, okay? There are people that are actually saying they're Jesus and got a gang of people following them. Saying There's got one guy in, in Miami <clears throat> who says he's Jesus, and he commanded that all of his members put 666 tattoo on their, on, their, on their hand or on their leg. So they all went out getting the 666 tattoo because they believe this guy is Jesus. His name is, last name is, real last name is Ortiz. Now, you know Jesus was from Cuba or wherever he's from. But, <clears throat> but people will, are easily deceived. And so um, you have to read all of this because there are people that are coming <clears throat> that are going to say that they are the Christ. So if, any, so if anyone tells you there he is in the desert, he says, do not go out. Or, Here he is in the room, do not. Verse 27. <clears throat> For as lightning comes from the east is visible, is visible even to the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever there is a carcass, there will be vultures. Now that is a proper interpretation for this. Where's she at? There's a, that is a proper interpretation for this. Because he's talking about the second coming. So wherever you see a body, he says, that will be vultures. On the other, in Luke, he says, um, wherever you see the bodies, he says, they ask him, where are they going to be taken? And he says, where the bodies are, he says, the eagles will be. So the eagles are above the clouds. So one, he's telling them about the eagles and the rapture, and the other one, he's telling them about the vultures and the second coming. Thank you, Nicole. <clears throat> okay, stay with me, you guys. I'm almost done. Okay, let's go down to verse, oh, here we are. Um, sorry. In verse 27. For as lightning comes from the east and is visible to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man. So when he actually comes back to the earth, everybody will see him. Um, where, wherever there is a carcass, there will be vult the vultures will gather. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. And all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on a cloud of the sky with great power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather the elect. Those are the Jews um, from the four winds uh, um, uh, and from the ends of heaven to another for, to the other. And he says, so that is the end of that. That is how the end will happen. So now you have this parenthetical ad or whatever, and it says, now let me teach you something about the fig tree, okay? Now let me talk to you about the fig tree. Who's the fig tree? Israel. Israel. He said, now I'm gonna talk to you about something different. This is not about the second coming of Christ. This is about another event that's gonna happen before the second coming. So he says this, now learn the lesson of the fig tree. As soon as you see its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near right at the door. What's near? I tell you the truth, this generation, okay, will certainly not pass away until you see all these things happen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. So he says in this generation, the fig tree generation, this is what you're going to see. <clears throat> no one knows about the day or the hour. Okay, that's the what? No one knows about the day or the hour or the month or the year. Is that what it says? Huh? I don't know. I don't know what kind of Bibles you guys have, but I want to make sure that we got the same type. Because it says nobody knows about what? The day or the hour. Okay? Not the month, not the year. Okay? 
And it says, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up until Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken. The other one will be left. Two women will be grinding uh, with their hands at the mill. One will be taken and the other one will be left. There is a seven year period that is coming upon this world called the tribulation that believers are not going to experience. Your job is to be ready to go before that time happens. What time are we in? We are in a month before the end of the last generation, which is May 14th. Chatter about the prophecy, chatter, chatter, chatter everywhere. Oh, the rapture, you heard all oh, those crazies, the rapture. Oh, rapture, rapture, rapture. Okay, then what happens? Because God says he's watching over his word. You think two people will not be in one place one day and one taken and the other one left? You think God wrote this just for a joke? You think he wrote this like, oh, I'm just writing this to scare people? Okay, so this event is going to happen. Just like Israel rebirth, it happened. Everything that God writes is going to happen, and you have to get that in your brain because God wants you to watch and pray and be aware that a prophecy is coming on this earth that you do not want to be here when it happens. Amen. <clears throat> I'm almost finished, Nancy. Nancy, like, you got five more minutes, Pastor. <laughs> All right. It says, um, it says, therefore, watch, because you do not know the day your Lord will come. But understand this. And then, so it goes on to tell you to do what? Watch. We're watching. Okay? I know this for absolute sure. May 14th is the end of the 70 year generation of the nation of Israel. Jesus said before the end of that generation, you will see two in one place, one taken and the other one left. Okay. I'm taking Jesus at his word only because he's been right every time. Okay. If you don't want to take him at his word, then you don't have to. But. Be aware that God is trying to give us eternal life, but you have to be in Christ. OK, you have to be in Christ. OK. I have to read my last scripture, Nancy. I'm sorry. <laughs> OK, of uh, Zephaniah chapter one, verse 12. This is what it says. And then this is it. Zephaniah chapter one. Verse 12, it says, at that time, I will search Jerusalem with a lamp and punish those who are complacent, who are like wine left in a dredge, uh, who think the Lord will do nothing, either good or bad. So there are some people that are just complacent and they have this attitude. God's not going to do nothing. We're going to watch next football season and we're going to watch next football season. Then we'll watch next year's playoffs in basketball. Everything will always be the same. Prophecy will never come true. I'm not with you. Amen. I'm trying to tell you the truth. OK. Eternal life is a beautiful thing. Let's be a part of it and let's make sure that those we love are being prayed for, that they can also be a part of it. Praise God.